What's up, everyone? I just forgot. I have my sample board over there. So my quad cortex has to uh, act as a sample board today, but it really hurt when I hit it like this. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola 30. Oh, it's 39. Shit! It's the same number as my uh, imaginary year and age that I have. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Sunday. I'm hoping you have a good morning out there. I'm probably sitting with you right now in the premiere, chatting away. Thank you so much to everyone that attends the chat. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm still working on my album a little bit. We're, we're mixing, but I'm hoping that it will be mix ready when the Sunday with Ola is up so I can start uh, shipping out the uh, the print material to all the printers and all of that. So, you know, we we can get going, guys. You know, I'm, I'm really excited about this album. I will probably have another single sometime soon, uh, just in before the release of the album. So I'm excited for that. But now we're going to talk about the news. I'm a Discord partner, by the way. Partner. <laughs> Not that it matters, but I got this Discord partner cup. See? Such a partner. So the first news I want to talk about is that uh, DC Comics, you know, the Batman guys and the Joker guys, they are teaming up with metal artists for uh, this year. The announcement goes like this. In anticipation of the international launch of DC's Runaway 2020 hit limited series Dark Knight's Death Metal. Mm, that's cool. <laughs> the publisher announced today plans to collaborate with seven of the most renowned metal music bands for Dark Knight's Death Metal Band Edition. Uh, representing a cross-section of metal music from across genres and generations, each special edition will feature a variant cover, spotlighting a different metal band, an introduction from the band, and exclusive interview. So that's pretty cool, actually. This will probably be in the actual comics that are getting, you know, sold. Are people still buying comic books? I don't know. <laughs> So far, they have Aussie, Megadeth, Sepultura, Dream Theater, Ghost, Opeth, and Lacuna Coil. Holy shit, look at this. Megadeth. Uh, is that Joker? No, that. The f is that? That's Joker, but he has like Batman ears. Oh, interesting. Or not. Uh, that's cool. Ghost. Mm, okay. Lacuna Coil, that is cool. There she is, Christina. Is that Batman with no ears? It's just a helmet. It's Batman with a helmet, okay? Uh, Opeth, look at that. Wow. Uh, so far, this is my favorite one. Look at this. Holy shit, that's cool. Oh, that's so fucking evil. Ooh, I like that. Okay, Sepultura. Oh, okay, that's cool. It's them playing live. I, you, look at this. Who was this guy? Matthew Lafray is the guy who uh, designed this. This is... Holy shit, he just nailed it right there. That's way too cool. This is... This is cool. It's just them playing live. But it doesn't really... It's like, okay, Joker there, band there. Not really that creative. This... is brilliant right there. I love that. That's basically like a really cool cover. Uh, album cover. Dream Theater. Yes, that is cool. It's Mike Mangini walking around with a snare. Yes! <laughs> That's how you play drums nowadays. It's just one stick in the snare. Just like uh, when you're like performing on the streets, but this is cool. Even James Labrie looks cool, man. Aussie and uh, Bat Joker. Is this Bat Joker? Is that a thing? Bat Joker? I I'm not too familiar with DC Comics. I love Batman a lot, but I'm not sure about the whole universe of the DC Comics. Uh, is this a Bat Joker? I don't know what it is. Now these are really cool. It's a death metal. Uh, I don't think any of these bands. Uh, even come close to being death metal. Maybe Opeth, maybe Sepultura. But yeah, still, I think it's a really cool thing to do. And it's nice to see these bands getting a little bit of a different kind of recognition. I'm especially excited that Lacuna Coil is on here because obviously they're not the, the, the biggest band in the world, but they're a great band and then they definitely deserve recognition. And also Opeth, of course. And this looks so good. Look at that. How fucking cool is that? Sepultura, Dream Fair, that's cool. So there you go, I'm mildly excited. Will I pick him up? Probably not. <laughs> you know, it might be tough for you guys to uh, recognize this, but 
Once upon a time I was actually a touring musician like two years ago. <laughs> now throughout the years I've been playing in a couple of bands, you know, I've been in, uh, uh, you know, I have my band Feared and I'm in The Haunted as well and then Six Feet Under uh, that I toured a lot with. So I've toured a lot for the past 10 years and you know touring is one of those things that when you're a very small artist you kind of dream of you know going out to and to play your music uh, to people and you know get new fans and you know just 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 be out there and play for fans as well it's just something special and extra but there's also a couple of of, uh, of sides of the touring aspect that might not be as glamorous as you know standing on stage playing uh, and playing for a lot of people uh, you know the traveling aspect obviously is uh, you know it, there's a lot of traveling a lot of waiting a lot of uh, a lot of downtime basically where nothing is happening uh, you're kind of like, you, you know, the hurry up and wait kind of thing you kind of stress to hurry to the airport and you know, be there in time and then you wait for 8 hours and then it's the same thing again, you have to hurry to the van the drive really fast and then you get to the venue to wait again stuff like that which is, uh, which is a little bit weird but if you have no idea how it is to tour Mark Morton of Lamb of God teaches you how it is to be in a touring band I'm gonna check it right here, it's on Metal Sucks Writing on social media, Morton says If you ever want to know what it's like to be in a touring band 1. Rent an RV, a nice RV, okay? 2. Pick up 6 to 10 of your buddies Well, yeah, pretty accurate 3. Drive 400 miles, find a gravel parking lot and park Okay 4. Order pizza That's, that's correct, pretty accurate Five, play guitar for one hour. Okay. Six, at 2 a.m. leave and drive another 400 miles. Yes, that's accurate. Seven, repeat steps three to six for seven weeks. Now, I mean, this list is a little bit written out as if it would be a complete chore to go on tour. And uh, maybe this is from, you know, Mark Morton, Lamb of God, just touring and touring and touring and grinding and grinding for so many years. I mean, the band's been established for a good while and you know they toured a lot so I understand there, it's a little bit of a you know I mean he's writing this little post right here it feels a little sour just slightly sour but in my opinion yes you know it is difficult to have these things the play guitar for one hour kind of deal that you're having right here I mean that's where it all matters man I mean that's why you do it you go there you go up on stage and you get to play for fans and you know expose your fans to music I mean that is worth everything else alone all the difficulties are nothing because you get to go up on stage and play in front of a lot of people and he's kind of not putting that in there so he's making it sound like you know touring is not that fun well I mean it depends on how you look at it if you really love what you're doing if, if you like your music and you know love your fans then these difficulties right here are, are non-existent it's part of the deal right there if you go out on tour so uh, yeah I, I just wanted to, you know, people might read this and think like, oh, touring is shit. It's not shit. Touring is great. <laughs> touring is great for just marketing yourself and, you know, for you to get out and meet people. You know, they're real people. Holy shit, man. I haven't you know, done a show in almost two years now. And I'm really, really missing it at this point. I mean, you have to meet the real people out there, man. Just say hi and, you know, go out backstage and, you know, hang for a second. For me, that's just very important and it's, it's just, you know, Fucking hell, that's what drives you to continue tour and continue to do music in my opinion So I mean he's not putting it in here but I'm gonna put a uh, uh, five and a half between five and six and say that you know have a great time and you know enjoy it to the fullest because you never know when it's over you know with Covid for instance I mean we won't know if it will ever go back to normal in regards to shows and whatnot so I'm just saying okay calm down so is that news? no okay great next Okay, a really exciting piece of news is the new Cannibal Corpse album coming supposedly in April and they have a new single out there Inhumane Harvest and uh, the video <laughs> typical Cannibal Corpse dead babies and, uh, and uh, yep umbilical cords ladies with uh, you know bloody vaginas and whatnot you know what you would expect from Cannibal Corpse and the song is what you would expect from Cannibal Corpse. It's a banger. <laughs> I need to get the oh. <laughs> hiccup. Sorry. Now the question begs: Is this including Pat or not? I guess we have to read the news about that. But the single is a banger. I'm looking forward to the album. 
and it's being produced by Eric Rutan, who kind of stepped in in Pat's place. And uh, I don't know. I hope that Paradise. I hope. Uh, there you go. Campbell Corpse cannot fail. Just keep on being f***ing the most brutal band ever. So there you go. All right. So right after I recorded my Sunday with Ola, I see the blabbermouth. Uh, article where it says that Eric Rutan is joining Campbell Corpse for sure. So Pat is not on the album. There you go. Eric Rutan has officially joined Campbell Corpse. There you go. Thank you. <laughs>
the process of writing recording and releasing an album i mean there's a lot to it and uh you know it's always like this when you're at the absolute start of the process it feels like you know when is it gonna end and you know there's just so much work left but now as i uh, sat here with joke it feels like we're on the home stretch basically and that uh, it makes me feel really good. It makes me feel really uh, motivated to uh, push out the rest and finish the rest. So it's I'm really excited. I'm, I just wanted to say that. Anyways, that's Adventures with Ola. Goodbye. Riff challenge number 38 because this is Sunday with Ola 39. But the last... Uh, okay. Just so you guys know, I have hiccups. I'm trying to get rid of it. But if it's... I'm just going to... I'm just gonna give my absolute best to ignore the hiccups, okay? But last week was Sunday with Olaf 38. I had drums uh, from that intro that people could download uh, and make their own <laughs> and make their own riff challenge. And we're gonna watch uh, those today. You can download the drums from the intro of this video and you can make your contributions for next week, okay? So challenge yourself to write something new every week, okay? Shit, I have to... <gasps> I'm gonna breathe... Okay, I was breathing in the last time and swallowed to see if the hiccups went away, but now I'm gonna breathe out <clears throat> this well, okay? <sighs> okay, let's hope for the best. So, we're gonna check out John Jaden Jr. What's up? <clears throat> Ooh... Gojira intro, I like this. <clears throat> Oh, oh. <laughs> That's great. Oh, what? What did he do there? He did a little flutter. <laughs> Andertons? Oh, yes, Andertons teacher. I bet he's from the UK then. <laughs> how did he? How did the hiccups become worse, man? Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. I like this guitar too. I think I commented on this. Yeah, I commented on this guitar. Hey, hey, but me. Okay. okay, I'm not gonna talk. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. That was John Jaden Jr. I wonder how awesome John Jaden Senior is. Tony G. Okay, Tony's watching my Sunday with Fallout from last week. Oh, oh shit, he's Johnny. Are my are my videos that shit? What? Oh sh <sighs> shit! Do I have to censor this? There were that, that was a nipple. <laughs> I think he's saying all of the sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. Is he okay? No, oh, that's cool. That was a little. You know, he did the extra uh, thing there, where he kind of, you know, he worked. He did. Uh, <laughs> he did something different, and that's cool. So that was Tony G. Well done. Last but not least, we have Andres Arevalo with a Keith Marrow guitar right there. Oh. Oh, it's the one with the Sustainiac. Yeah. Stanky. I'm waiting for him to pick up the, this uh, LTD acoustic right there. Okay. Yeah, man. Awesome. Andres Arevalo. If you want to be on my Sunday with Ola in any shape or form, the easiest way would be to download the drums in the description of this video, make your own riffs to those drums, upload to YouTube, and maybe I'll check you out for the next Sunday with Ola. So, uh -oh. there you go. <laughs> Shit. Ola tasting. Shit. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Ola and Luis tasting shit. So, how are you doing? Good. Do you have your penis? Do you have your penis friend there? I have my vagine. 
Vagina. That's her name, by the way, Vagina. Vagina. And uh, that's uh, Plago. Plago. Yes. <laughs> From the past couple of weeks where we've tried more American candy or chocolate, uh, people have been asking, so, Ola, you asshole, <laughs> show us your favorite candy then, you spoiled little Swedish brat. <laughs> And I'm like, well, sure, let's just do uh, all the tasting shit with uh, our favorite candies of Sweden. And uh, worth mentioning is that these are uh, mainstream candy. Yeah. I mean, these are very, very common in Sweden. And uh, you can basically get them in any... And I think you can basically <laughs> get them anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. And maybe even from the outside. So you can probably, uh, we'll, we're going to show the packages and maybe I'll write down what it is so you guys can order it uh, for yourself. Uh, we're going to start today with the favorite candy, like, you know, the, the color, uh... colored and the soft candy, I would say. And then we'll do chocolate in a separate video, okay? So where do you want to start? Yeah. Louise is an expert on the soft candy, I must say. I love these, yeah. Uh, let's start with with these. Where do you have a good one? What is this? This is cars. It says Bilar. This is uh, very old, classic. 1953. Swedish. It's a very classic Swedish candy. Oh, 1953. Bilar. They've been available uh, for that long. I, I think mean, they taste a bit like uh, almost like mint, but not really. It's like something. Uh, no. Anyways, I remember these from, you know, I mean, since they, these have been available for, since the since 50s. 53. Yeah, since 53. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, you know, these always existed. Yeah. And they were always very addictive to eat. Yes. And I sent uh, a, a, like a taste, taster units for this all across the world. Not across the world, but you know, to the, my, my <laughs> moderators, for instance, uh, on yeah. my Discord. And they, they, they're screaming for more. Yeah. They love this. So this is probably one of our most classic yes. uh, candy. And no, we do not have Swedish fish in Sweden. That's an American candy. I think we do. It's you know, just the something else. Fish. It's I just something it's, else. Yeah. They look like this. <laughs> Three different colors, like uh, little mashed up cars like this. Do you think there's a, a taste difference between the three? When I was a kid, I was always like, you have to eat three at a time, like one, one of each, each color. And that's okay. like the, the bliss of the candy. It takes a while to chew. Yeah, but these are really nice. They're probably available at Ikea, if you go to Ikea. Probably, yeah. Uh, most likely. So if you want to try out these, Bilar, Ikea, okay? Maybe we should go in time, I think. This must have been around for many years too. Try not. How long? Jag kan inte kasta med dem på det, utan det var Skilje Yes. Which, <laughs> which is basically sugared uh, jelly. Jelly raspberry? Yeah, something like that. And these are, I mean, these these exist in different variations across the world, I would say. It's just jelly, yeah. but uh, these, uh, these are nipple uh, shaped, which is something I, I always uh, loved. <laughs> that these are like small little nipples. There you go. <laughs> these are really tasty. I love these. Very common is that you give away these on Valentine's Day yeah, in Sweden. In the shape of hearts. In the shape of hearts. So it's something to, uh, you know, you give to your uh, penis friend or your vagina friends. Tutti, tutti frutti. Tutti frutti. All fruit in uh, Italian maybe. I don't know. Tutti, tutti frutti. frutti. Oh, you know what? Finish. It's, it. it's fat, sir. It's Finnish. But we were talking about the, our favorite candy. Yes. You know, so that's what, okay, it's Finland, it's it's Scandinavian at least, okay? It's our neighbor country. It's our neighbor country. We, we, we're good friends, okay? Trust us. <laughs> so, uh, Tutti Fritti from uh, Fatser, which is, we're gonna talk about Fatser a little later, because uh, in another video, uh, because it's, uh, no artificial flavors. flavors. And also vegan. Oh, let me just show. Lemon. Oh. So maybe Fatser bought up the company that made Tutti Fruity. Maybe. Made it their own. That's the fucking fence right there, they just fucking claim everything because they have money and They're skill. so much smarter than us. They're just way smarter. Last but not least, we have another classic, Gott och blandat, which basically translates to good and mixed <laughs> <laughs> or tasty and mixed. This has also been available for as long as I remember. Yeah. And there's a bit, there's licorice in there as well. Yeah, and there's different licorice. This is salty and this is sweet. Gott och blandat has never been my favorite, you know? 
I like it. So there you go. That's gott och blandat. My personal favorite is, is probably this one, Ågrens Bilar, because it's just a classic. And whenever I eat one now, it just gives away a very nostalgic uh, uh, flavor yeah. in my mouth. Get them on Ikea, we'll man. Go, we'll go for this. Okay. Nipples When I got cars. tattooed both times, I had these. Oh, okay. Maybe I can bring this to the next uh, tattoo session. Do it. I'll sit there and eat my cars. <laughs> there you go. Traditional uh, Scandinavian uh, candy that we like, soft candy <laughs> that we like. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Next time we'll try out the chocolate, okay? Yes. Great. All are receiving gifts from people around the world. All are receiving gifts for the people around the world. I receive the gifts from you and I pay a lot of import tax just to get your shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> sometimes you guys uh, send me gifts and I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this gift that I received today, okay? It says, Ola. When you talked about seeing Pantera live in the FAQ 148, it saddened me to hear your friend who had two picks gave the extra one to somebody else. I know you're a huge Pantera fan. I share your reverence for Dime. His guitar playing influenced me more than any other. It's in my guitarist DNA. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to be serious, but my hiccup is f***ing me over. What I've sent you is THE guitar pick I caught from Dimebag Daryl when I saw Pantera at Ostfest. 2000 in Virginia Beach, Virginia. This is not an extra pick that he tossed out at the end of the set. No, this is one he actually used to play a song with. It's important to me that you have this pick because the way I see it with this pick sitting in a tin on my desk, it doesn't exist. It only exists to me. But in your hands, it ex exists to you and everyone in your universe. This pick has more value to me if it's shared with those who truly love and appreciate Dimebag Daryl. I've had this pick for 20 years now. I think it's time to spread the love. I hope this makes you happy, truly. You've inspired me during some of my lowest moments with guitar and music. There have been so many times you've helped relight the fire in me that fuels my desire to play guitar and write music. So in a way, this is also a small token of my appreciation. Your Brola, Wes, as known as Metalhead757 on Discord. P.S. I'm sorry that the print on the pick is a bit faded. It's really old. One side says Ausfest 2000 and the other side has the Pantera logo and Dimebag Daryl signature. Thank you so much, Wes. You have no idea how happy this makes me. So he sent me this. Let's see if I can come up close. And uh, I'll take an additional couple pictures of this. But basically, now the print has faded a lot. Obviously, because, you know, if you play it, it fades. But uh, he used this pick live. And... Uh, holy shit, man. I don't think I would be able to take it out of this. But I'm gonna, I guess, I'm doing it right now. Ausfest 2000. Pantera and Dimebag on the other side. You kind of see the silhouettes of where the printing was. I'm just gonna do one chord, okay? Because, you know, Dimebag played this guitar pick. I'm gonna play a fucking Dimebag riff. What this thing. Okay, I don't want to play it anymore. Dude, that is so cool. Thank you so much, Wes. I have a couple of other dime bag picks that I'm gonna try and... I, I want to do some sort of display for the dime bag guitar picks. Definitely gonna put that on there. Thank you so much, Wes. I really appreciate that. And that, my little friends, was Sunday with Ola 39 right there. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's little show. I haven't really been working that much with videos lately because I've been really kind of, you know, trying and finish off my fucking album <laughs> and uh, but when it is done when everything is said i'm gonna you know uh, push a little bit more on the video side of things i also have other projects that i need to uh, kind of dwell into but right now i've been really like you know focusing on the album i'm still cranking out this the sunday with olas but you know th they're a little bit more hastily done <laughs> If uh, you, you might have noticed that, maybe, that they're a little bit uh, more hastily done. I mean, the intro song, maybe not, not the best I've, I've made in my life. You know, I'm still, I, I know how, how important the Sunday with Ola is for a lot of people. So obviously that, you know, I'm prioritizing that over a lot of things. But uh, you might have seen that I've it dropped my video count to about three videos a, video, uh, three videos a week or something like that. Uh, it's because I'm working on my album. I'm trying to get it out and get it done. 
uh, you know, because the video making takes a lot of time as well. So there you go. Uh, thank you for understanding. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you guys an excellent Sunday. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Yeah. I'm getting the hiccups and shit. <laughs>